what used to work back in the back in the old days um, really does not now. You know, it, it really doesn't. And a lot of the things that you used to do um, in order to, to gain um, ranking on the on Google, um, if you do that now, you're you're dead in the water. You're gonna be you're gonna be tossed right off the research results. So. Hello and welcome to episode 39 of the Smart Agents Podcast. My name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we're going to be talking all about optimizing your real estate website to rank on Google search. It's no big secret. If you want to get the clicks from a Google search, you need to be as far up the first page as possible. Vancouver-based Chris Odette has mastered search engine optimization, ranking many of his websites at the very top of all internet search tools. Throughout our conversation, he shares his tips for how you can rank your website as well. Now, before we get into the day's featured interview, make sure you follow and subscribe to the show on whatever platform you listen to podcasts. You can find us on all major podcasting platforms from Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and the list goes on. Also, as you can see if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Click the bell to get notifications when each new episode is uploaded. And lastly, if you or somebody else on your team has an awesome story or tip to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview, talking all about how you can optimize your website with Chris Adet. Yeah, so pretty much the way I like to start everything out is if you could just tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, how long you've been in the industry and where you're at. Okay. Well, I got licensed uh, a little over a decade ago. So I think, actually, I think I'm running on 12 years now. Um, I used to run a uh, internet advertising company. Um, it was a very small company, but I came from a very large company and learned a, learned a ton from them. Um, saw some kind of flaws in the whole system and the way things worked. So I wanted to be actually a part of uh, a part of the end, the end, uh, the end profits for, for a company. So if we didn't do our job properly, and they didn't succeed from it, then we didn't get paid, basically. So that, that led into a lead generation um, company that I did for, for real estate specifically. Um, we started off with a, with a listing site that ranked really well on the search engines fairly quickly. Um, and then through the years, we morphed it into an actual real estate team. So we do a little bit of lead gen for, um, for real estate teams and agents that are outside of our area here. And we do our own, our own team gen stuff for for within. Um, it's been quite a learning experience, I'll tell you. Right. Yeah. Well, and especially when it comes to the lead gen and, and website optimization, especially, you know, like there are so many different things and it's always changing too. Yes. In fact, what we started off as, you know, um, frankly, I'll, I'll even give a couple of references back to a couple of our sites uh, as some examples, but um, what we started off at, some of it, I look back now and I'm really rather embarrassed to be, <laughs> to be sharing um, what used to work back in the, back in the old days um, really does not now, you know, it, it really doesn't. And a lot of the things that you used to do um, in order to, to gain um, ranking on the, on Google, um, if you do that now, you're, you're dead in the water. You're going to be, you're going to be tossed right off the research results. So. Right. And the search results are so important because, I mean, I know when I was looking for an agent, the first thing I did was go to my phone and punch in, you know, St. Augustine real estate where I live. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't fail. You're, you're looking at that first page. Very rarely do you go to that second page. Yeah. In fact, actually, those first top three results are really where you want to be. Um, and I'll, I'll give a little little uh, failure of our own that we've had over the last while here. We used to hold uh, top three rankings for pretty much every search term um, across the Calgary market, which is where I am. Uh, so if you search, like you said, Calgary real estate, um, we were number one for the longest, longest, longest time. Um, we dropped down to number four spot, number five spot. Some of the big major national sites uh, came up and overtook us. So we're working on regaining that that spot right now, but uh, the difference to that traffic is fivefold, easily, easily fivefold, just for each individual term. So, um, you know, if you're if you're talking to a search engine optimization company that's that's you know promising the world for you, first page results, um, first page results don't really mean anything because the number ten spot is going to get you know one out of every hundred searches, um, whereas that that number one spot is going to get probably ninety five, probably about eighty by the second. About seventy by the by the third, and those are actually old stats that that I know of that I'm running off of. 
Um, Google changed a lot of the way that they format the page now. So those advertised sites are up first, pushing the, the organic search results down quite a bit. So um, it does definitely make a radical difference. You're better off to go whole hog for some easily achievable terms that w- generate a decent amount of traffic um, than, you know, trying to uh, get greedy and, and break the bank with that, yeah. that, you know, city real estate terms, city homes, that sort of stuff um, where everybody else is going for it as well. Right. So when it comes to optimizing your site and to get yourself ranked on there, what are some of your tips and what are some of your go-tos that you use with your agents? So um, you really got to concentrate on um, three kind of main things. And that's uh, um, the, the on-page elements, which is what people tend to think of, you know, writing about the, say, the community. Um, uh, as an example, I'll use later on, um, Altador is a community here in Calgary. So writing about that community and hoping that that page gets ranked for community searches. Um, uh, Altador Homes, Altador Real Estate, Altador Condos for Sale, Altador Houses, Altador Houses for Sale, all those different different iterations of what is you know primarily the same thing. Um, so there's the on-page, there's the off-page, which is all of the the other pages on your site that either contribute and help to that ranking or, or do not, um, you know, and if that, that is the purpose of them. Um, and then there's the off, off uh, website uh, stuff as well, which is um, things like links, uh, links and mentions. So if other sites, uh, particularly popular or high domain authority, um, highly regarded sites, if you got a link to your site with CNN saying, this is a great website to search for, uh, you know, Calgary real estate, you're going to do well. That is going to be a very nice link that, you know, the search engines like Google look at and say, well, this is probably a legitimate guy. Um, if you've got uh, five uh, websites, um, mortgage brokers that, uh, that cater into, um, you know, hard, hard to, to qualify people, probably going to be, give you a bit less stuff unless they are also a high domain authority. So, um, and, and links have always been kind of the, the big one that people think of, but the search engines are really moving a lot off links because of the over-optimization that has happened on it. Um, and they're going a lot to mentions too. So, um, you know, just as an example, if you've got um, uh, all the, the content from this conversation on this page and it links off to a page on our site, that's a big link. And that's, that's going to help us, you know, quite a bit. If there's a mention of just real-estate.ca, which is our primary site, that helps as well. So, you know, even just having mentions throughout a number of different sites can really, can really help you. And the bigger, the more high authority the site, you know, the more uh, popular, well-renowned it is, um, the more you're going to want that, that right. link up, or, or at least mention. Right. And when it comes to like the keywords and one of the terms I've heard a lot over the years is keyword packing. And so yeah. like, where's the, where's the fine line in that? Where do you kind of What's that level of kind of getting that, you know, even like just the words and the actual text into those pages? Yeah. So, so my advice on that would be, and this is a, um, really kind of one of the tips that got me started into the SEO world because that, that was my background for, for a while. Um, be super descriptive, but be normal. So if I was talking to you here, you know, I'm, 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 I've been in, in this industry for quite a while, um, 12 years actually. I wouldn't say that on my website. Hi, my name is Chris Adet, because I'm trying to get right for my name. Hi, my name is Chris Adet. I have been a Calgary real estate agent for the past 12 years, um, selling Calgary homes uh, and, and condos uh, to clients. You know, kind of spitballing here, so it might sound a little wonky, yeah. but, um, you know, I would speak like that. I would be super descriptive. Um, selling downtown Calgary condos uh, has been a specialty of mine, um, although I do venture into houses, townhomes. Do you know what I mean? I, w- I would be yeah. very descriptive in what I said instead of being very vague. And a lot of people wonder why they don't even rank under their own name, but they'd never mention their name on their, on their website. Right. So right. how is Google supposed to just know who <laughs> you are, right? Right. So be super descriptive. But then the, the other side of that is don't pack. I'm not going to say within one. I sell real, I'm a Calgary real estate agent, so, agent that sells Calgary real estate in the Calgary real estate market. And you see that a lot, like a lot. If you were talking to someone, they'd think you're an idiot. Right. So Google will look at it and they'll say, well, this guy's an idiot. Or he's trying to fool us into thinking he's the penultimate of Calgary real estate agents. Um, so you, you, you want to speak it kind of really naturally, almost like an engineer would, would, would say something, you know, and, right. and the real estate agents tend to really dislike 
engineers because they're, they're very factual and they pull up all sorts of data. Pretend you're an engineer when you're writing the content <laughs> yeah. on your website. Be right. very descriptive. Um, um, you know, s- say things and say things very descriptively, but don't keep saying the same thing over and over and over again. And just a real quick example of that, uh, one of the very first um, sales pitches that we did in SEO, um, the company that I used to work for before I started my own, we went into a travel agency and they, they proudly showed me the website that they had just built. And on the very bottom footer, it said travel, travel, travel. And I, I kid you not about a hundred times, just travel, 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 travel. So they were going to rank for the word travel. Um, I would be hard pressed to ever get a site to rank for the word travel. Extremely popular, extremely small as well. Travel to the Calgary area to ski in Banff. Very good yeah. possibility. I can get a site to rank for that fairly right. easily. And it's also very, um, specific to somebody that's looking for that too. So, you know, that's kind of the other thing with it is if you're going for, um, and I'm just going to keep using my city as as an example, Calgary Homes or Calgary Real Estate, everybody's going after it, a lot of searches for it, but it's very on in the search process. So the people that are looking for this are still, you know, nine months, 12 months away from, from actually making a purchase. But somebody that's searching for Altador condos for sale They've done a lot more narrowing. They're much closer to the to the final purchase process. So you've got a lot better chance of actually capturing them as a client and converting them into a sale as well. And ultimately, at the end of the day, um, you know, when I started this, we started work ranking for Calgary Real Estate. That was cool, great, and it added a whole lot of traffic to our site. But I didn't really care. What I really cared about was Altador condos for sale. Way, 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 way less traffic but way better chance of that actually turning into, you know, a, a close, a close transaction for us. Um, right. And if you're looking at organic um, search traffic, you know, and, and organic optimization, that's, that's really important. Um, but it's also important when you're looking at pay-per-click programs where you're actually paying for every single visitor. Yeah. The, the term Calgary real estate to get a user online who goes onto Google and types in Calgary real estate to get them to click onto my site through a pay-per-click program is probably going to cost me anywhere from a buck 50 to two, two fifty for every single click that happens. And that's going to happen several hundred times a day because it's so generic. So I'm going to pay 500 bucks a day. No, no word of exaggeration. If I'm going after that term for somebody who's not nearly as likely to convert into a sale as somebody who's searching for Altador condos for sale. And that's going to cost me 10 bucks, 10 bucks to get a sale versus 500 bucks to probably not waste a whole bunch of time. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for that second one every right. time, but people don't, it's, it's totally reversed. So. Right. And for people that aren't too familiar with, you know, keyword optimization and those kind of things, where, what kind of products or what kind of services do you use to kind of search out your keywords to determine which ones are the best ones to try to rank for? You know, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but um, back in the day when we started all this, uh, there was programs like Word Tracker um, that were very easily able to figure out. Um, they, were, they were a meta search engine, so they searched the search engines um, and they could tell, you know, within a, within a reasonable amount um, that Calgary real estate was searched 150 times a day. Calgary Houses for Sale was searched, I'm spitballing again, making these numbers up, um, was searched 79 times a day um, and how competitive each one was. Now you're kind of better off just to go into your Google, um, pretend you're doing a pay-per-click campaign and just start running through there. But but in all honesty, the, the way that I've done it primarily is just if I'm a user and I'm actually doing this. So when you're, when you're searching for your clients, instead of searching on um, your, your real estate database program, Go on to Google, search for these things, see what comes up and search just the way that you would if you were them. Started high and really generic, st- really start narrowing in, um, see what comes up as results, see what you like as the results. Um, you know, like does Zillow have, I, I love that piece on Zillow. Man, I really want to incorporate that into my site. If you want to incorporate it into your site because it's useful, then it probably is useful for the for the customers as well. But um, I digress. I, I, I basically just pretend I'm a, I'm a user searching and how am, I, how am I doing it? What am I looking for? What are the common terms that I use kind of nationally? Um, you know, I start high with, with city. That gives me absolutely nothing. City real estate or city homes. Um, you know, now I'm, getting, now I'm getting somewhere, but I'm realizing that I'm having to go into the search, search bars on the website and um, 
and refine my search from there. If I'm a normal user, that's cool, cool, good, and great. I'm going to do it once or twice on that site, but I'm always going to go back to Google and I'm going to start refining my searches all through Google, um, okay. Google, Yahoo, Bing, whatever it is, but primarily Google. Um, the, the only one that they're going to be really committed to is, is Google. It's not even Zillow or realtor.ca, you know, depending on where you are. Um, it's Google. They, they go back yeah. to Google. Um, and those sites, realtor.ca, Zillow, you know, they, they continue to get the traffic because Google keeps referring right. and recommending them. Right. No, exactly. And even, you know, I, I do a lot of uh, YouTube stuff. So even in the keywords there, one of the main things they tell you is your tags, you set it, you put it in as a question, you know, that somebody, it's not so much the way it used to be where it was just like the one or two word little tag. It is very much the specific question that somebody would be asking if you're doing a training video or things like that. Yeah, very much. And voice search is becoming more and more popular. Um, you know, we've looked at it a number of times for, for real estate. We go really heavy after people searching for listings. Um, so I don't think it's as relevant there for Altador Homes for Sale. Um, however, where it is definitely really relevant is um, what are commissions in the Philadelphia area? What are real estate commissions in the Philadelphia area? If you're looking to sell your home in Philadelphia, you can be expecting to pay somewhere around blah, blah. However, real estate, you know, I mean, obviously the, right. the regulatory board would have um, their way that, you know, you have to be wording things, but um, very, very good point. And frequently asked questions. Um, you know, one of the, the other really nice things that, that people can do that you are doing, so as a, as a perfect example, um, do a video, you know, do the, the captions underneath with all the content from, from what we've been talking about, calgary-real-estate.ca. Got my mention in there. <laughs> you know, but I know I'll say, you know, do those things. And I mean, don't, don't do them flaky like, like I just did, but mention them in there. And then, yeah, um, you know, do a, a frequently asked questions and do a, a blog. Um, on that blog, do a video piece to it on a regular basis. You know, you're getting on YouTube, you're getting on um, video searches, you do, you're getting hopefully on the voice searches as well. So you can do a lot of stuff that, that puts you in as the local authority on your real estate market as well. And there's you know, multiple ways to do that from you know, having a book, um, having a, a blog, um, um, having a, a video show or a podcast where you interview mortgage brokers or that other sort of stuff as well. But yeah, definitely concentrate on some of that stuff like frequently asked questions. Um, do uh, your take on different communities. Um, and do it in a, in a video fashion. Um, John Cheplak is a, is a, a highly regarded coach in uh, the real estate market with some really top people, um, you know, including a, a close personal friend of mine at the brokerage here. Um, and one of the things that he always says, I'll try and bleep it out. Um, my bleep ass video, oh, I guess that's the part I should have the bleep <laughs> My bleep bleep video uh, will outdo your non-existent video every single time. Um, and it's just really, you know, it's really good words. You know, I can see the reflection on my face. I can see uh, um, uh, a, a, a bunch of light shining and stuff. I'm not particularly proud of the, the sound on it uh, because of the microphone that I'm using and the last minute doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, this being out there is going to make a bigger difference than not being out there. Um, and there's definitely some, some other ways that you can do to, to clarify yourself as an authority within that, within that industry. And that all helps the SEO. The opportunity to do things like this will help my website rank as well. And it can help, you know, the, the audience for, for getting their site as well. Particularly things like, you know, books and magazine right. articles and all that sort of stuff. So. Right. So switching gears a little bit now, you know, say we've got the, the SEO, the optimization is really rocking and rolling and we're getting a ton of leads. It doesn't matter if you're not able to convert those. Yeah. So let me talk about that for a second, because this was a hard, hard lesson for me to, to start with. Um, I started this site. I started getting rankings. It was actually kind of in the earlier days where um, the sites, the, the clients were well ahead of the sites. Um, they were very, they were, they were 1980s websites, like kind of, kind of prevalent throughout. So we got a bit of a jump in the market. They're much, much better now, uh, much more user friendly for the most part. But um, we started ranking extremely well right off the bat, like, like very, very early on. And my whole goal was never to sell real estate myself. It was always just to do, to help others who were good at what they do become successful at what they do. And we were going to do that through lead generation. But I sent out, I sent out leads and I'm talking property inquiry leads. I would like to see this home. I'd like to see it on Saturday. So not even registration, leads, actual property inquiry leads. I want to meet a realtor. Can you help me? 
yes, I would love to show you that. Um, we, we were getting very little back. So at, at one point I had to, to kind of pull myself back from the, from the website and put myself into the industry. I started taking leads um, myself and I started, I started working um, with clients as well. Um, and I, you know, through previous industries, I did some stuff very naturally. Um, and I, I didn't even realize what was happening at first, but these were kind of the main reasons why I was able to convert the leads. One, I sat on a couch with a script printed out right beside me and I had it all over the place. Um, so I actually had it laminated in a version of my car. I had a, a version, um, you know, in the magazine rack beside, uh, beside the couch, I had it kind of strewn all over the place that I could easily pick up and refer to. So I got very proficient at saying the same things in the same way and then tweaking that out as I, as you know, I felt things could be better. Um, so my calls were immediate. There used to be a thing about 15 minutes. You have to call within 15 minutes or you're going to lose people, um, which I immediately said, they know, that's, I'm going to lose 95% of the people if I wait 15 minutes. Our mandate was immediate. The, the kind of newer mandate is within five minutes. I'm telling you right now, call immediately. Call while they still have the property or your website because they're about to bounce off of it. Uh, call, call while they're still on it and make that your goal. You know, pretend they're calling you and you're answering, not that you're responding to them now. Call. Do not email back. Do not hide behind the, the technology. Use the technology, but do not hide behind it. It will cost you so much money, it's not even funny. And when I started this, there was, you know, as much traffic as we had right away, um, there, was, there was competitors, um, you know, people, people that I know that had websites that stood, stood behind the screen and really kind of tried to initiate things that way. Um, and they, they did veritably no business or got lucky with a few. Um, you know, whereas we started doing really good business when we started tweaking this up. Call immediately. So I'm going to move to the next one. Call immediately. Um, book an appointment. So book a face-to-face -face viewing. Um, I do not believe in this whole thing of, um, of uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, qualifying your client on the phone. If you get a sense of something that you should be talking to them about a little bit further, it's like, t tell me a little bit more about your mortgage pre-qualification because it just sounds a little off. You know, if, you're, if your bells are ringing, absolutely. But I find that most of the agents wanted to disqualify people rather than qualify people. And if you were selling a $10, um, you know, used pair of sunglasses, absolutely. We're talking about commission checks of 5,000, 8,000, 10,000, 15, 20,000, depending on your market and what your average um, price point and, and commission rates are. Um, you're, you're talking big dollars. Um, I'm telling you right now, the, the people that I have seen that do a buttload of business will list a mobile home and they do a lot of business. Whereas a lot of the other agents couldn't be bothered to meet for this $350,000 condo unless they are absolutely sure this guy is buying and buying quickly. That's an $8,000 check. You know, if you're doing $30,000 a year and you're poo-pooing because you don't want to waste your time, you know, or your gas money, you, you, you just probably re-look at, at what you're doing. Um, and that may sound a little harsh, but you know, really, yeah, I, I find it pretty true. Um, if you've met them a couple times and your, you know, your spidey senses are going off, well, that's a little bit of a different thing, but, um, you know, meet face to face, don't disqualify, call them immediately. If you're not reaching them, call again, don't leave a message, call again right away. Leave a message on that one is, you know, what I, I prefer to do because we don't want to harass them. Send them an immediate text as well. Hey, just called. We're able to get a hold of you. If this is your preferred, you know, please feel free. And then, and then send an email and have a follow-up process as well for, you know, at least, at least nine to 12 uh, contacts over, over a couple of days and don't stop it at one or two. Like most people do claiming how, how they do so much, you know, keep, keep running. And then the other thing is once you've met them, hopefully for, for more than one property, you know, hopefully you set it up, book the next appointment. Like you always, always, always have to book that next appointment. And if they're a year out and you, you don't want to see them again for another three months um, or talk to them again for another three months, uh, then schedule a phone call. Tell you what, let's let's talk again. Grab your calendar if you could. Um, let's talk again. Today is uh, March, May, April, May, June. Let's talk again on June fifteenth. Uh, it's a Wednesday, three o'clock. If we need to change that, we totally can. But let's let's just chat again for a touch base at that point. See where the market is and see if anything's changed. And then call them that day. Hey, has anything changed? Because I'll tell you right now, when people say they're a year out, they're six months, and there's probably about a month 
between when they find the property to when they close. And that's really when they're looking at is, is when they want to be you know, closing and moving in. So half of it, you know, immediately, another 30 days for close, and then another month or two for, for searching, um, you know, to, to be realistic, you, you're, you're looking at their month out. So they could start now. And they'll probably move it up if they find something right. So, you know, get them, get them looking for a test drive. I've, I've driven cars that I had no intention of, or sorry, bought cars that I have no, in, no intention of doing because they got me out for a test drive. And houses are great for doing stuff like that as well. Well, I really, so, and I really like that idea of the, uh, you know, the booking the appointment before you leave the, the appointment you're on. You know, because how many times have you been on something or, you know, even with friends, like, oh, yeah, we'll get together. We'll set something up later. And it never happens. Yeah, it's huge. Life gets in the way, right? And yeah. they love you. They want to use you. They want their parents to use you, their kids to use you, everything else. They can't imagine going with anyone else because you made such an impact. Ten minutes after leaving, they forgot your name. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've, had, I, I've had clients that I have spent six months with, mm-hmm. you know, a couple years back that love me love me. And that's not being arrogant. I'm just making a point. Um, if they don't know my name, I'll almost guarantee you, they do not remember my name. What was, what was it was, it was a really common name. It must be Dave, Dave, <laughs> search Dave realtor, Calgary. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like really, yeah. He had a beard. Yeah. It's, yeah. That, that, I think that's him. Right. <laughs> White haired guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's call him. <laughs> right. Well, awesome. So, well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Like in that, you know, half hour or whatever it was we were talking, we packed a lot of information and a lot of really useful information for agents of all levels too. Yeah. Well, thanks, Michael. I really appreciate the time. And so I did, I did intend on going in a, a little bit deeper with some of the, uh, the actual tips and hints, but you know what? One of the best ways to do it is Google optimizing your real estate website, see what comes up. And frankly, if it makes sense as a, as a business and not as a trying to fool the search engine sort of thing, it's probably good information. You should probably follow it, um, you know, and just just be comprehensive in what you're what you're writing. And and for people, you know, to check out your sites too to see, you know, what you're doing. Can you give me a couple of the uh, the actual yeah. addresses they can check out? Absolutely. So, and I've got kind of two different uh, models that I've fallen under with uh, two of my different sites. So, if you search um, uh, real hyphen estate dot ca, um, that's our national site, but it's, it's really kind of kind of more local focused. Um, and it's, it's got a kind of a generic feel to it. Um, so it'll, it'll go after community level because that's still my, my high point, but it won't break up much further than that. But, and this is where you, we might read in about long tail keyword searches, um, real hyphen estate.ca caters into, you know, real estate or Calgary real estate, Altador real estate at community level. But if you want to go even deeper and therefore more likelihood of success, whole bunch more terms that you rank for with uh, much more uh, specific calgary hyphen real hyphen estate.com slash altador.php i'll use it as an example um, altador is a community in calgary if you go onto that page you can follow off all the links to estate homes luxury homes condos townhouses so i've got pages built out for each of those long tail keywords and then just as an example on this one as well because it will depend uh, on your area um there's a nickname for that community, Marta Loop. It's actually the business revitalization zone. So a lot of people know Altador as Marta Loop, but Marta Loop's actually a bunch of other communities. So I've got a page for that, for Marta Loop real estate as well. Um, in, in areas like Toronto, uh, intersections are really important. So there's an important intersection in Marta Loop, which is 33rd Ave and 20th Street. So if I want to get really refined, you know, and it makes sense for my area, I would go right down and have a page 33rd Ave and 20th Street. And, and have that, you know, the listings around that, have some content around that. What's, what's the neighborhood like? What are the people like? What are the, the businesses, what's the grocery stores, the schools? Write about the schools. Don't just list them in the phone number, but write a bit about the schools. Write them in your first person and be descriptive. Always keeping in mind that the, the big category there, um, you know, on the community levels is community real estate, community homes, community homes for sale, um, homes for sale in community, you know, whatever variant of that. And, and vary it up you know, speak, right. speak to it, but speak naturally. Awesome. Well, thank you yeah. so much for uh, hanging out with us. Michael, it's been a pleasure. I sure appreciate it. I really want to thank Chris for joining us today and sharing all of his awesome tips for getting your website ranked at the top of a Google search. Also, if you'd like to check out what Chris is doing on his websites, I've linked them in the episode description. So once again, if you think you or somebody else on your team has an awesome story or tip to share with our community, 
Send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.